All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm here to review <clears throat> Voyage of the Fox Rider by Dennis L. McKiernan. This is a uh, part of his um, Legends of Mythgar series of books of which I have Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I've got all fourteen of them, and just so you know, this one fits in chronological order, right after Dragonstone, which is the book, the first book, and um, so this is book two, and uh, not that you need to read them in any specific order because all of his books are standalone novels with just within the same universe or the same fantasy realm. Um, you don't need to read one before the next. You can read them in whatever order you want. I'm just happening to... Well, actually, I'm kind of reading them in whatever order I want to because I reviewed book one, then I reviewed books, you know, eight, nine, and ten, and now I'm reviewing book two. So I guess I'm not doing this in order. I was going to say it's cool to do them in order, but I'm not following even that advice. So, you know, we'll, we'll put that in a trash can. Okay, Voyage of the Fox Rider. Um, came out in 1993, um, Dennis L. McKiernan. Let's talk about the cover first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. We've got a great cover here by the late, great Keith Parkinson, who, um, by the way, my review of Rasulka yesterday by C.J. Cherry, th th those covers were done by uh, Keith Parkinson, too. What a coinky dink. Anyway, um, so we've got this great... Um, wrap around cover it goes all the way around we've got pirate ships in the background it's just looking really cool great you know so um lord of the rings now every time i do a dennis l mckiernan book review i have to mention people think that dennis l mckiernan's books are very derivative of jrr tolkien's lord of the rings in both the way they're written the stories the characters the um the different creatures and races and landscape and even the prose, even down to the way the prose is similar to J.R.R. Tolkien. And Dennis L. McKiernan admits that this is the case. This was the goal, to write stuff that um, sort of mimicked what uh, Tolkien was doing. And no apologies for it. Um, if you want to watch some of the other things I have to say about that subject, just type in Dennis L. McKiernan's name and my last name. And I've got other book reviews where I get into that a little more depth. But there are um, a lot of maps within this book. There are a lot of um, little pages of history, like little prefaces and a little glossary in the back, just like Lord of the Rings. Um, and um, it's a cool, this one's a cool story. So let's just jump right into the story. So um, we begin with... A character named Ferrix. F-A-R-R-I-X. This little guy is a Pisk. P-Y-S-K. And these are the hidden ones, the little people. They're only 12 inch tall. In fact, his girlfriend, um, whose name is, uh, gosh, what's her name? Um, Jinnerin. We can see her on the cover. She's the little one on the cover with the fox. It's a voyage of the fox rider. She's a little Pisk. And she rides on a little fox. So it works. It's kind of like that. A little bit of red wall. We're getting a little. Don't I don't want to. I don't want to get my anxiety levels up too high because red wall triggers me a little bit with the little talking animals. But well, we won't get into that. If you if you need to know about that whole thing, just type in my last name and my review of red wall, and uh, that'll explain everything that I'm talking about. But anyway, um, the little little fox and a little pisk. So Ferrix and pisk. The Pisk Ferrix and his little girlfriend Jinnerin, his beloved, as it were, as they're called in the book, they are out and about and they see magic in the Aurora Borealis up above them one night. This um, intrigues Ferrix and he seeks, he, he goes out on a quest by himself um, with begrudgingly Jinnerin sort of lets him go. She knows she's not going to be able to stop him. She doesn't want to go with him. But she's like, he's not. He's going to be restless till he figures out what the magic in the Aurora Borealis meant. And so she lets him go, and he goes out to seek out the mystery of what he saw in the Aurora Borealis, which takes him far, far away. 
Okay, so that's what happens at the beginning. And then we jump to um, Alamar the Mage, um, the magician, our Gandalf character, who is also represented there on the cover, as you can see. And he is just sort of minding his own business in his own little laboratory, as wizards do with all their little bubbling potions and whatnot. And uh, Jinnerin... Jinnerin and her little fox show up on his doorstep. Now he knows Jinnerin and he knows that she's a fox rider and he knows she's one of the pisks, one of the hidden ones. But he's delighted to see her. But uh, she says, Hey, my boyfriend Ferrix saw something in the Rory Borealis and now he went off to find it some time ago and he's not returned. I haven't heard from him. I need to seek him out. I need to go find him. He might be in trouble. And you need to come with me. And um, so Alamar the Mage is intrigued by a lot of things that she says and some things that I didn't mention and some other things that are going on behind the scenes. And so he's like, well, I will go and I will help you on this journey to go find out what happened to your boyfriend. And as they go, they meet um, a whole cast of characters. They meet a fellowship of characters. There's Aravan the Elf, who is the sea captain of the um, ship that they take because they do have to do a lot of sailing. There is um, Bokar the dwarf, the arms master of the ship, of course. There's Jakku, the, uh, he's kind of like the black man. The, he's on the, he's represented right there. He's, uh, one of the, uh, main fighters on the ship. Um, and then, uh, there's Alice, who's a seer, um, who is actually the daughter of the wizard. And they've got an interesting, uh, relationship, kind of like a love-hate relationship between father and daughter. Daughter has daddy issues. That's all I'm going to say. Anybody that has a wizard for a father is bound to have daddy issues. I mean, it's just inescapable. So anyway, all of this quest, this fellowship to go find Jinnerin's missing boyfriend is all sort of wrapped around a bigger thing where the master of evil is summoning a new dark lord into the world, a new Sauron, as it were. Like, and there's an evil guy that is summoning him, and this is, has to do with the Borealises and magic in the sky and different gemstones and weapons, and you know how it is. All the magic talismans, all the, all the cool Lord of the Rings type stuff are showing up in droves in this book, and I love it. I, for one, enjoy Dennis L. McKiernan's books specifically because they give me that Lord of the Rings sort of it. They scratch that Lord of the Rings itch when I need that itch scratched. And this one was a really good rousing adventure. It was, it was like Fellowship of the Ring on the high seas and then onto land. And then there's a Dark Lord and everything. Uh, and it was pretty cool. I give this a solid 8.5 out of 10. And it fits right in with all the other Dennis L. McKiernan books just perfectly. So Voyage of the Fox Rider, everybody.